Good day class! We are here to study another interesting topic about housing requirements for poultry and livestock based on industry standard feeding management for poultry and livestock. Let's start! For the content standard, the learners demonstrate an understanding of the concepts and skills in animal production. For the performance standard, the learners illustrate the housing requirements for poultry and livestock based on industry standards. For the learning competencies, 1. Discuss the feeding management according to the Philippine National Standards for Poultry and Livestock Animals. 2. Illustrate housing requirements for poultry and livestock based on industry standards. For the content vocabulary, we have feed. Feed is any materials which are processed, semi-processed or raw, intended to be fed directly to farm animals. In this way, they meet nutrient requirements to maintain life, promote growth, production and reproduction. Feed additive. Feed additive refers to an ingredient or S added to the basic mixed feed. It is usually used in micro quantities and requires careful handling and mixing. It has no nutritive value but adds quality and efficacy. Feed ingredient. Feed ingredient is a component part of mixture making up a feed, has or has no nutritional value in the animal's diet. For example, plant, animal or aquatic ingredient or organic or inorganic substances. Broods. Broods refer to the young animals of birds, produced at one hatching such as duck, chicken, and quail. Gestation. Gestation is the process where farm animals are conceived and developed in the womb. Parturition. Parturition is the action of giving birth to offspring. Layering. Layering refers to chicken intended for laying eggs. Housing requirements for poultry and livestock. There are different types of housing. First, shed type. The animals can move freely in and out of the housing area and paddock. Feeding and watering troughs, mineral feeders and grain bunks are located on concrete pads at the center or along the side of the shed. Next, pen barn type or stall barn. Each animal is confined in a stall. Each stall is provided with individual feeding and watering trough. Confined housing. Group pens with the same sizes are constructed with ample area for animals to exercise. Bamboo or wooden slats serve as fences of the feeding trough giving enough space for animals to insert their heads. Next are the structural requirements for livestock. For slatted floor, slats should be 70 mm to 10 mm wide, 25 to 30 mm thick, laid with slot space of 10 mm to 25 mm. Roof should be adequate enough to provide shelter against rain and intense heat. For shed type housing, the roof shall slope towards the back of the shed. Wall shall be adequate enough against rain. A clearance of 150 mm to 300 mm between floor to wall and wall to beam. According to the Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standard, the shelter for dairy cattle should consider the following characteristics. A. It shall conform to the land use plan of the area. B. It shall be accessible to service roads, water supply, and electric lines. C. It shall be well drained and well ventilated. D. It shall be constructed in an east-west orientation. E. It shall be situated where the prevailing winds will not carry odors to the farmhouse. Structural requirements for poultry. It should be within the approved land use plan of the local government and compliant with national regulations. It should have a suitable area for storage of feed, carcass destruction, waste management, and workers area. The chickens should be sheltered in a suitable structure appropriate for intended uses, with sufficient shelter and ventilation. Next is the feeding management of poultry and livestock. There are different types of feed, forages, 
These are roughages like grasses, legumes, and crop residues that provide fiber, essential for ruminant digestion. Concentrates. These are high-energy feeds like grains, oil seeds, and meals rich in protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Supplements. These are additional feedstuffs like minerals, vitamins, and medications to address specific deficiencies or health concerns. Understanding common feed ingredients is crucial for formulating balanced rations. Here are some key categories. Energy sources. Grains like corn, sorghum, and rice. And energy-dense byproducts like cassava and molasses. Protein sources. Plant-based proteins like soybean meal, peanut meal, and copra meal. And animal-based proteins like fish meal and meat and bone meal. Fibrous materials. Roughages like forages, hay, and straw provide roughage for gut health, vitamins and minerals, essential for various physiological functions, often included as premixes, additives, enhance palatability, improve feed efficiency, or prevent spoilage for example antibiotics, probiotics, antioxidants. Feeding frequencies. Feeding frequency refers to how often animals are offered feed. Here are some considerations. Species and age. Young animals and lactating females typically require more frequent feeding than adults. Physiological status. Animals in high production states like pregnancy and lactation may need more frequent feedings. Feed type. Roughages can be fed less frequently than concentrates due to slower digestion. Management practices. Feeding practices like ad libitum or continuous access or restricted feeding can impact feeding frequency. Next is the Occupational Safety and Health or OSH in feeding programs. Animal feed can harbor dust, mold spores, and bacteria, posing health risks to handlers. Here are some OSH practices to ensure safety. Wear personal protective equipment or PPE. Use dust masks, gloves, and eye protection when handling feeds. Practice good hygiene. Wash hands thoroughly after handling feeds and animals. Store feed properly. Maintain dry and well-ventilated storage to prevent mold growth. Be mindful of lifting techniques. Use proper lifting techniques to avoid injuries when handling heavy feed bags. Feeding management according to Philippine National Standards for Poultry and Livestock Animals. The Philippine Bureau of Agriculture and Fisheries Standards BAFS outlines good animal husbandry practices GHP, for various livestock, including poultry. Here's how these standards influence feeding management. Feed quality and source. Acquire feed from reputable suppliers adhering to good manufacturing practices. Feed storage and handling. GAHP promotes proper feed storage in designated areas with good ventilation to prevent spoilage and contamination. Balanced rations. GAHP highlights the importance of providing complete and balanced rations to meet the animal's specific needs. This aligns with the principles of proper animal nutrition. Feeding practices, GHP or good animal husbandry practices, emphasizes providing a daily feeding schedule and ensuring all animals have access to feed and water. This helps prevent competition and ensures proper nutrient intake. Products and byproducts of poultry and livestock production. Livestock raising provides a wide array of benefits. While it is true that it provides a source of employment for the community members, it also provides a wide array of goods and services. These goods and services are intended for human consumption. This includes traction, milk, eggs, fibers, wool, leather, feathers, pharmaceuticals. Traction. Farm animals such as cattle can serve as draft animals to draw farm implements, agricultural supplies, and products. Dairy products are derived from livestock that produce milk such as cattle and goats. It can be processed to produce cheese, ice cream, butter, yogurt, etc. Next, eggs and meat. They are excellent sources of protein and other nutrients. Clothing. These can be made from animal skin and feathers. Cattle skin can be made into leather. Goat fur can turn into wool. Chicken feathers serve as clothing accessories.
Lastly are pharmaceutical products. They are derived from skin, bones, horn, hooves of slaughtered livestock. Byproducts of poultry and livestock production. Animal byproducts ABPs are materials derived from animals which are not intended for human consumption. This includes a. Slaughterhouse waste are byproducts derived when livestock are butchered in the slaughterhouse. Slaughtering leaves skin, bones, horn, hooves, blood, fat, and awful internal organs. B. Catering waste are materials used in the entire livestock production. It includes food waste, plastics and packaging of the feeds, glass bottles of medicines, boxes and cardboards. C. Fallen stock are farm animals that died due to natural causes, diseases or killed prior to harvest. D. Materials produced by animals such as manure, eggshells, feathers, wool, and fiber. F. Former foodstuffs of animal origin are products that are no longer suitable for human consumption, such as milk, eggs, and meat. ABPs provide benefits because some have high nutritional value. Thus, it can be used to develop products such as fertilizer, feed, biofuels, and cosmetics following the waste management system in the following section. Farm Waste Management in Poultry and Livestock Production Waste Management Systems There are six basic functions consisting of the waste management systems, production or generation, collection, transfer, storage, treatment, and utilization. Farm Waste Management in Poultry and Livestock Production Waste Management Systems A waste management system in poultry and livestock production involves these steps. Production Waste is generated from animal manure, bedding, feed leftovers, and wastewater. Collection Manure and waste are collected manually or using mechanical systems like scrapers or conveyors. Transfer Waste is transported to storage or treatment areas via pipelines, carts, or tanks. Storage Waste is temporarily stored in lagoons, pits, or silos to prevent contamination and facilitate treatment. Treatment Methods like composting, anaerobic digestion, or drying are used to reduce pathogens, odors, and volume. Utilization Treated waste is utilized as organic fertilizer, biogas, or animal bedding, promoting sustainability. Let's have a short quiz to test your understanding. 1. Which of the following types of housing is specifically designed for poultry? A. Coops B. Stalls C. Hutches D. Pens 2. Where do livestock animals like cattle, sheep, and goats graze freely? A. Coops B. Stalls C. Pastures D. Pens 3. What are forages? A. Additional feedstuff B. High energy feeds C. Minerals and vitamins D. Roughages like grasses and legumes 4. What do supplements primarily address? A. Energy requirements B. Protein needs C. Specific deficiencies or health concerns D. Roughage intake 5. Which is not an energy source commonly used in animal feeds? A. Corn B. Soybean C. Molasses D. Rice